Hello friends and a very good morning. My name is Swapin and in this video we will learn about the types of connection. Types of connection basically determines how Power BI connects with the data source. So there are some three different types of connections that we'll understand and practically implement those. So let's get started. So as I said, there are three types of uh, connections. The first one is import query. The second one is direct query. And the third one is live query. So now let's understand the differences between these three. So in my current page, I have a table which uh, determines the comparison points between the three connections. So the first one is import query and the point is where does the data resides? So in case of import query, data resides in Power BI. So it's a kind of copy paste mechanism. So once the Power BI connects to a data source, it gets the data imported into Power BI and the data resides into Power BI. In case of direct query and live query, they just connect to the data source and the connection is established. And once the data is required, it's requested to the data source and the data source sends that data. So this particular data which is sent to Power BI is uh, not uh, stored uh, as a full uh, data there, but it's stored as a cache. It's not stored as a permanent memory. It's stored as a cache into Power BI. So for direct query and live query, we can say the data resides in data source. Let's understand this with the help of an example. So in this scenario, I have a SQL server, which is our data source, and we also have a Power BI desktop file. Okay. Now let's understand how the connection or uh, how the uh, different types of connections behave. So uh, first in case of import query, sorry, I'll just take a pen. Okay, so in case of import query, what happens is basically Power BI tries to establish a connection which show uh, with the data source and the uh, table which Power BI has requested, the data which Power BI has requested. Maybe it's a table basically. So this table data gets copied uh, from the data source and it's pasted in Power BI. So there is a copy of the data which gets stored in Power BI. Okay, so for simple understanding, we can say there's a copy paste mechanism. That data gets copied from SQL Server uh, and it's stored in Power BI. So there is a copy made in Power BI. Okay. Now uh, let's understand what happens in case of uh, direct query. So for direct query, what happens is Power BI will try to make a connection with SQL Server. Now, once the connection is established, the SQL server will send an indication that, okay, you have successfully established the connection with me. I'm ready to give you the data. So in the uh, in the first, in the import query, what we saw was the Power BI establishes the connection. The SQL server, uh, in case of import query, returns the data. But in this case, the connection request has been established and that intimation has been given by the data source. Now, once that particular report is consumed, okay, so we have made a report, we have published it on a Power BI service. Now, one of the user or the stakeholders is using that report. So, uh, for now, we can say there are uh, maybe uh, four pages in that report. So, at the time, one page is consumed of that report. So, once the report is consumed, so Power BI will again go to SQL Server and the data required to render the visuals in that particular page, that particular data is only requested to SQL Server. So this is data request. So once the data request is received by SQL Server, SQL Server will in turn retrieve 
re return that piece of data to Power BI. And this data is stored in Power BI as a cache. So it doesn't store it permanently. So this is how the direct query and as well as the live query behave. OK, so uh, the direct query and live query, uh, the data resides in data source itself. But in case of import query, we can say the data resides in Power BI since a copy is uh, imported into Power BI. So that was the first point of comparison. The second point of comparison is data transformation. So uh, what do we mean by data transformation? Data transformation basically can be a small step like uh, changing the data type. So once we consume a data, so if the data type uh, we want to change as per uh, the visualization as uh, we want, or uh, if the data type is not correct, so that is a transformation step. If we want to derive a new column from the data, that is also a transformation step. So there can be a different transformation steps that we can do on the data. So uh, as uh, we know that uh, Power BI is a data visualization tool, we need data to make it uh, uh, to make the visualization. So uh, the data which is there, uh, which we import in Power BI or which we uh, get from the data source as and when required, uh, has to be tra transformed uh, as per our requirement. So in case of import query, we have the full control over the data since the data is there in Power BI engine. So we can perform all the transformation steps that are available in Power BI and desktop. All right. Uh, in case of uh, direct query, yes, we have the uh, privilege to transform the data. But my recommendation would be to uh, do the transformation steps outside Power BI as the data is not there in direct query. So what, what will happen? So basically when the data is requested, so the data will come to Power BI. So some transformation steps will be carried out on that particular data, and then it would be uh, taken up to render the visual. So that will be time consuming. So it's better to have that particular transformation steps done in the data source itself, okay? In case of live query, we don't have that privilege. We, the transformations, uh, what we can see the option is disabled. So we are not allowed to do any transformation. So that was about the data transformation part. Uh, the third point is when to use. So it's basically a recommendation kind of like this particular point in time you should use import query. So when you have a small data set, a small data size, since the data is copied from the data source to Power BI, the whole data. So uh, the recommendation is if the data size is small, you can use import query, you can go for import query. Uh, in case of direct query, if the data size is big, it's in TB, it's in GB. Uh, so uh, we should go for direct query because we cannot afford to copy all the data from data source to Power BI. So that will be a big cost in, in terms of bandwidth and very time consuming, right? So a direct query should be used when the data size is big on which you want to make the visualization. Uh, the third one is live query. So uh, live query doesn't have any recommendation as such. It has a fixed data source if connected to which it, the connection is termed as live query. So if you connect to SSAS, if you connect to a data source in Power BI uh, service, or if you connect to CDS, common data services, so these particular connections are termed as live query. The fourth point of differentiation is a data source support. So all the uh, data source which can connect with Power BI supports import query, okay? All the data source which can connect with Power BI, there is some connected in between. So they support import query. Uh, when we move on to the direct query, so uh, there are less data sources which supports uh, direct query, okay? One of them is SQL Server. Uh, in case of live query, we all know, uh, as we have already learned, that only currently only three options are there to make live query. So it's SAS, uh, sorry, SSAS. Second one is data set in Power BI service and the CDS. So these were the four points of comparison that uh, I wanted to notify. Apart from this, uh, one more point which is important is related to performance. So since the uh, import in import query, we have the data in Power BI. 
So the performance is better in case of import query compared to direct query and live query. So that was the fifth point. So these were the some basic points uh, in order to differentiate it or in order to know what is exactly import query, direct query and live query. Now let's understand uh, practically how to implement these queries. OK, how to make this connection. So we'll go to a Power BI file. So in this, you can see there is a data set here, sales table. So in this particular Power BI file, I have made an import query. I have the data inside Power BI. So if I go to the data tab here on the left hand side, we have the data tab. I will click on that so I can see the data inside this Power BI file. So for this table, we have three rows and three columns, right? So let's understand how to make these connections. So first click on this get data. It will show us a list of data sources which we can connect to. OK, so once we click on data set, uh, sorry, get data, we have these data sources. For this video, we'll connect to SQL Server database. I've clicked on SQL Server database and now I'll click on connect. So now SQL Server will ask us uh, like, so, oh, sorry, basically Power BI will ask us which server, what is the name of the server? So we'll provide the server name desktop. Uh, PH39 um, Q4A. Okay. Uh, the database name is optional. And below that, you can see data connectivity mode. So for this class, for this particular uh, uh, example, we'll prove, prove uh, we'll go ahead with the uh, import query. So there are import query option and direct query option. So we'll choose the import query option and then click on OK. So now uh, it will ask for the credentials to connect to the SQL Server. So let's just wait for a couple of seconds. It should pop up. OK, so it has not uh, asked me about the credential because I had already connected to this server. But in your case, if you are first time connecting to the SQL Server, it will ask you for the credentials. So you can use uh, any of the method, uh, one being the uh, Windows authentication and the second being the database uh, credentials, right? So here I have one database demo purpose. Uh, I'll click on that. Inside that I have sales table. I have clicked on the, uh, I've checked the box. Now I can see the preview of the data uh, in my table. So now once you have selected the table that you want to import and now you can click on load right once you click on load it will uh, uh, it will load the data into power bi so i had already imported that data so i have not clicked on load uh, so like this you would uh, see that once the load process is done the data columns or the table will be reflected here so this is how uh, we make the import query connection and we are able to see the data which is here, right? And for doing the transformation steps, we can always uh, go here and click on transform data to work on the data to do the data massaging, any uh, thing that we want to do. Now let's jump on to the direct query part. Let's see how to make the direct query. Uh, Making the connection is similar, or it's rather it's very uh, it's the same. Only thing being, uh, we'll have to choose just the direct query option instead of the import query. So I'll click on get data. Then uh, I'll click on SQL Server database. I'll click on connect. Now it will ask me the database name. So I'll type in the database name desktop. Uh, PH39Q4A. And then I have the direct query option selected. So uh, if it's not selected, select this. If it's clicked on import, rather than import, click on direct query and then click on OK. So once you click on OK, you have to follow the same steps, select the data, and then you can see the uh, data file here on the left, uh, right hand side, right? 
So in case of direct query, as we have already discussed, a connection is established. The data is not taken uh, into Power BI. It's not stored into Power BI. So I'll not go ahead. Uh, I have already imported the data here, not imported. I have already established the connection. So uh, with, for demo purpose, uh, I will just stop here. So once you click on direct query and click on OK, uh, the next steps are similar as we done for the import query option. OK. So uh, now, uh, here, once you come to the left hand side, you can see there is no data tab here. Since uh, we know that the data doesn't reside into Power BI, the data type is not required because you won't be able to see the data because the data is not there in Power BI. So this is the first differentiation point that we saw. But yes, if you want to transform the data, the transform data uh, option is enabled. So you can do that particular thing. All right. So this was about the direct query option. Uh, and now for uh, let's move on to the live query option. So in case of live query, uh, what will happen is basically, uh, uh, I've already made a connection with the same uh, data set. What I did was basically I made the uh, demo file, the, uh, the import query. And then I save that file and published it onto the Power BI service. So now once you publish your file to Power BI service, the report is uh, is published to the Power BI service and also a data set is created in Power BI service. So that data set I have connected to using this file. So this connection is termed as live connection. Uh, the data source are limited for this. So we all know that uh, we all saw that SSAS is one uh, Power BI uh, data set in Power BI service is the second and the CDS. OK, so we'll uh, in this particular uh, Power BI desktop file, we won't be able to make that connection, but uh, let's make that connection in some other file. So for now, I'll just uh, but before that, let let me show you that uh, here also we don't have a data uh, to see the data. Uh, we don't have the data symbol, the data to see the data options. And also the transformation step option is disabled. We cannot transform the data. OK, so this was uh, this is the case in live query. OK, so let's uh, go to. Query. Let's go to this import query option. Uh, so if we try to make a, a live query with the uh, in this particular file with this particular import data uh, connection previously made it won't allow us because live query does not allow any other connection in that in the same file so if you can see here uh, in my live query demo file uh, I'm not able to uh, click on the get data because once a live query is made, it doesn't allow you to take any other data in it. No, uh, no other data can be allowed. So what we'll do basically is uh, we'll delete this particular a uh, data set from here and we'll delete it. Delete the data. We'll keep the visual here. Since the schema of uh, both the tables that is there in Power BI service and that we have imported from SQL Server is same. Uh, it can capture the data and show the graph once the data is here. So now what I'll do, I'll click on get data. Uh, it will show us the data source that we can connect to. So, so as we know that we have limited data source to which we can connect to for this for, for this demo. I'll connect to Power BI data set. So I searched for Power BI. And this is the first option, Power BI data set. I have clicked on that. Now I'll click on connect. So now once uh, I clicked on connect, it should uh, give me a pop up to select the data set, which would be there in the Power BI service. So now you can see that I have one data set in Power BI service. 
uh, this is the account uh, which we had made earlier for the Power BI service, right? And uh, I'm the owner of this, and uh, as, uh, this is the demo file that I had uh, published into Power BI service. I've selected this data set. Now I'll click on create. So once I click on create, it will directly uh, get the schema and load the uh, uh, columns or the this particular columns name and the table name here. So since uh, we already uh, had made this uh, graph earlier and we have just changed the data source since the schema uh, of the table is same, uh, we, we didn't have to make the graph again. So Power BI was smart enough to understand since the schema is same, what columns it has to pick. The name of the table, the column name, uh, the data type of the uh, column should be should be same. So that is called the schema of the table should be same. So since it was similar, uh, Power BI was smart enough to understand which column to take and it has created the visual for us. So uh, that's it for this particular video. So uh, in this video, we learned about the different types of connection. We also learned how to make those connections. So I hope this particular video was useful for, to you. Let me know in the comment section if you need anything else, and you need uh, any, anything else uh, in, in terms of types of connection. So thank you guys. Have a nice day.